dismiss with Brother Tony and Sister Bev for Junior Church. Amen. And I appreciate Brother and Mrs. Frost, and I appreciate them very much. Thankful for talent. Amen. What a blessing. I've really enjoyed her piano playing. Amen. And so, hallelujah. God is good. And so I want to talk to you this morning about why SRBC exists. Acts chapter number 2, if you would please. Acts chapter number 2 in your Bibles. And we're going to be taking a look at those passages. You know, uh, a little over 11 years ago, it was actually 12 years ago, I was in uh, Pennsylvania, just outside of Philadelphia, and I was serving with my brother-in-law in his church, and his dad was the pastor at the time, and we were there just working and serving in the ministry there, and I'd gotten done with Bible college, I'd been there for about two years, and uh, the Lord just began to stir in my heart that I needed to go do something for him. And I really wasn't exactly sure what that was, what I was supposed to be doing. I knew that it was going to be either evangelism, starting a church, pastoring a church, something. I knew I was getting ready to get into something, and the Lord was stirring that summer of uh, would have been 2008. And so anyways, uh, I ended up taking a trip out to Delaware, Ohio to visit a friend of mine that I had in the military. And uh, we visited Grace Baptist Church that weekend, and I met Pastor Corey Bain. And Pastor Bain began to talk to me, and uh, he found out that I was a graduate of Providence Baptist College. And the next thing you know, he said, we've been praying to start a church, and we need somebody to be the church planner. And I was like, well, uh, let's pray about it, amen. And he asked me if I'd be interested, and he said, let's pray. And so I came back to Pennsylvania And we prayed for about two months, and uh, he called me up one day, and I was at the chocolate factory. I was making chocolate, amen, and hallelujah. Uh, I I walked out of the bay. I answered the phone. I walked out of the bay there, and uh, a Pitt, Ohio truck came driving by. And I thought I had pretty much known what I was supposed to do. And this guy was on the wrong end of Philadelphia. He was supposed to be on North Philly. He ended up in South Philly along the river there. And uh, he was asking directions. I was like, you're on the wrong side of town, friend. (laughs) And so anyways, Pastor Bain said, do you think you have any direction? And I'm looking at the side of that truck, Pitt, Ohio. And I'm like, I think maybe I do. Lord had given me a verse as well of scripture and God had just really, and as a matter of fact, before he called, I was praying. I was like, Lord, I need some direction. And I just happened to be praying at that time. I was getting ready to go on my break, and he called. I stepped outside. There's the Pitt, Ohio truck, and I just knew God was calling. And so, and we packed up. We moved here on the very last day of 2008, lived in Delaware for one year, and then uh, prepared and worked in the ministry there and started putting things together and getting everything squared away, what we would need. And boy, there's a lot of work that goes into preparing to start a church. And so, and the Lord just mightily provided. And Grace Baptist Church, her people, we found this building, and God began to work. We started deputation, raised some temporary support, and uh, we did deputation for six months. God raised exactly what we needed. Actually, as soon as we started, God provided and I just praise the Lord because most church planners, you know, they can't be full-time, but we, I have been able to be full-time in the ministry here since the beginning. And so and I praise the Lord for His goodness. He has been faithful. And so it's been exciting. And I remember when we first started, we started the week before the 25th. The 25th was a Sunday, 11 years ago, April 25th, just like it is today. And uh, we started the Sunday before on a Sunday evening, and we had... Uh, five different services, Sunday night to uh, Thursday night, and uh, they called that the Get Acquainted Meetings. And so we had those meetings, and each one of the nights, uh, either Pastor Bain preached or uh, Brother Dr. Jessup from Baptist Church Planning Ministries, and they, they talked about all different things. They talked about the manuscript of the church, and they talked about the message of the church, and they talked about the method. Each night was a different M, you know? And so all the way over to Thursday night, and now they had instructed me my first time preaching here, which I'll tell you, I was scared half to death. And uh, um, 
I remember that first night, and they instructed me. Now, what you want to do on this last night is you want to cast a vision for what you see for Solid Rock Baptist Church. And so as I prayed and I studied, uh, the Lord said to me, your vision doesn't matter. And I was like, okay. He said, I want you to preach my vision for Solid Rock Baptist Church. And so when I studied and I looked into that and uh, I got over to Colossians chapter number one. Hold your place in Acts chapter number two. I want you to see this passage. That night, that Thursday night of the Get Acquainted Meetings, I preached and I preached from this text, Colossians chapter number one, and uh, very thankful uh, for the Lord's direction in this, you know, and, and uh, I've heard many preach uh, their vision for the church and starting and stuff like that and whatnot, and they cast a vision about having a bus ministry and this and that and reaching their community and talking about preaching the gospel and all of those things, and those are all important things, but that's not really the vision for Solid Rock Baptist Church. Those are just tools to fulfill the vision tools that we need for that. And if you'll notice with me in, in Colossians chapter number 1, verse number 12, if you would please, if you're there, say amen. amen. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Verse number 12, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son. Can I get a witness right there? In whom we have redemption through his what? In a generation of Christianity that doesn't like to talk about the blood. The Bible sure is full of it. Amen. Even the forgiveness of what? Sins. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Talking about Jesus Christ, that firstborn. Not talking about an actual creation date, but talking about a place of authority. And so, for by him were all things, what? Created. Who? The Son created all things that are in heaven and are in earth, visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and what? For him. And he is before all things and by him all things, what? We're sitting here today because he's keeping things together. And he's been keeping things together for almost 6,000 years now. Amen? And he is the head of the body, the what? Church. church. So what's the church? Well, it's the body of Christ, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. And here was the, the part of the text that I really focused in on that night. That in all things he might have the what? Preeminence. What's the vision for any local New Testament church? That Christ would have the preeminence, that he would be number one in everything that we do. Everything that we do for in this place ought to be done for Christ. Amen? It's for him and his preeminence. And so as we look at this and we see this, and, and I preach that message that night because I've heard so many people say, you know, let's keep the main thing the main thing, and soul winning is the main thing. No, it's not. Now, it's an important thing. Soul winning is vitally important that we reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. But the main thing is that Jesus be the main thing. And so as we look at this and we see this, it's vitally important. How many things is Christ to have the preeminence? All things. Amen? He's to have the preeminence when it comes to your food. Can I get a witness? He's to have the preeminence that comes with what you put down your throat when you drink, amen? He's to have the preeminence in the clothes that you wear, in the relationships that you have, in your leisure time, in your work time, in your children, in, in every area of your life. He says all things he's to have the preeminence of. When it comes to what you drive around in, Christ is to have the preeminence. Hey, when it comes to your marriage, Christ is to have the preeminence. When it comes to your workplace, Christ is to have the preeminence. When it comes not only to your marriage and your workplace, but your money too, amen? Christ is to be number one. He's to have the preeminence in not some things, all things. We read over in 1 Corinthians chapter number 10, verse number 31, whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do some, all to the glory of God. 
Everything is to be done to God, the glory of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. God, is, hey, listen, the bottom line is, is, yeah, listen, we want to grow, amen? We want to fill all the chairs in this place, and we're going to do the things that it takes to do that, and we've been doing that for 11 years, but the bottom line is, is our goal is not growth. Our goal is God. Our goal is to know God, to live for God, and listen, if God is our goal, then growth will happen. Amen? Because God is to be number one in our lives. Jesus Christ is to have preeminence. God created and organized a local church for a very important reason. Amen? And sadly, too many churches today are being started for the wrong reasons. And so, uh, as we get into this, uh, well, I better be careful. I'll jump ahead of myself. I'm excited about what the Lord's given me today, amen? It's exciting to be a, a born-again believer in Jesus Christ. It's exciting to have a Bible that you can mark down and count on. Listen, I have lined my life up to this book to the best that I can, and I'm trying to do it even more and more every single day, amen? Because it's good to be saved, and it's good to have something that tells you, thus saith the Lord, if you'll do this, God's going to bless you. If you'll do that, you'll go to heaven. If you'll do this, then God's going to do this. I really like that. Amen. Given it shall be what? Hey, hey, knocking it shall be what? Open. Hey, seek and you shall what? Find. Amen. It's not a maybe. It's not a might. It's a guarantee from God's holy word. And I thank God that we've got a word from God and it can be counted on. It is good to be saved. Amen. I'm feeling a bit frisky this morning. Hallelujah. And so anyways, we look at this, we see this. Hey, listen, there's a reason why. And I want to take a look at five purposes given to the church in the book of Acts that we can see. If you go back over to Acts chapter number two, obviously Christ is to be preeminent. He's to be number one. But he has given us some purposes that will help us to keep Christ in the right place in our lives, that'll help us to keep Christ as number one in our lives. And boy, I don't know about you. Listen, let's just be honest. It is hard to live the Christian life in the world in which we live today. Our society is anti-God from the word go. I mean, they're changing all kinds of things and doing all kinds of crazy stuff in our world. It's just unbelievable where we've come to in the United States of America. It is hard to believe that a boy can be a girl now. And that a girl can be a boy. Are you with me? That doesn't make any sense in my brain whatsoever. Amen. Listen, the bottom line is, is people don't get to decide what gender they are. They're born with it. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God created us a certain way. And uh, man, I, I'm thankful for that. And so as we look at this, we see this. Man, it's good. And so let's look at five things, five purposes given in the church. Acts chapter number two. Let's pray. Father, we sure do love you. We thank you for your goodness and grace, Lord. I pray now that you'd fill me, use me, guide and direct me. Help me to say only what you want me to say, Lord. And I pray, dear God, that you just, just really open the hearts and minds of each and every one of the individuals here today. Thank you for each person that's in this place. And Lord, if there is one here today that does not know you as their personal Savior, Lord, they're not truly saved. God, I pray today would be the day of salvation in their life. I pray, dear God, to remove the blinders. The, the Bible says the devil's placed on their mind. And Lord, I pray, dear God, you let that glorious light of your amazing gospel shine unto them. Lord, work and move as only you can. For those Christians that are struggling with their Christian walk in life, Lord, I pray, dear God, that you'd help them and strengthen them today. Lord, I pray for those that may be downhearted, discouraged about what's going on in the world today. Lord, I pray, dear God, you'd lift them up and strengthen them, Lord. We love you, we praise you, we thank you for all that you do for us. I pray now that you'd bless the preaching of your word. In Jesus' precious holy name we pray, amen. And so as we look at this, first thing I want you to notice with me, number one, number one for the purposes of the church is to inspire people to develop a heart for God to inspire people to develop a heart for God. Amen. My, my desire in this church is that you would love God with all your what? heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Not just a little bit of it, amen. I want you to love God with everything that you are, amen. And when you love God like you're supposed to love God, hey, there's not going to be problems in deciding what you're going to do with your life. Can I get a witness? And so to purpose to inspire people to develop a heart for God. Look at verse number 37 of Acts chapter number 2. Now when they heard this, they were what? Pricked in their where? heart, amen, in their mind, no, in their toe, no, amen, you ever stub your toe, man, that's a horrible thing, but man, I'll tell you what, when God stubs your heart, man, that's good stuff right there. 
Thank you, Jesus, for pricking me in my heart and showing me my need of salvation back in 2006 when I got born again. Amen. And God showed me I needed to be saved. And glory, hallelujah, I got born again. And things are different now. And God helped me to have a heart for him. And boy, I'm glad for that. Amen. They were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Man, that's a good question, isn't it? That's a good question. Man, when God's working in your heart and dealing with you, <laughs> men and brethren, what are we supposed to do? Well, I'll tell you, the Bible gives a pretty good answer about it, amen? And I'm thankful for the answer that the Bible gives. And we see here in this passage, look at what it says. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Can I get a witness right there? Praise be to God for the wonderful gift of the Holy Ghost that when a person accepts Jesus Christ, it comes and dwells inside and begins begins to deal with and to begins to work on and begins to guide and direct and lead into how much truth? All truth. Amen. What an awesome God we serve. A purpose to inspire people to develop a heart for God. And how do we do that? Amen. How does that happen? Well, I'll tell you the first thing the church is the primary function of the local New Testament church. Yes, keeping Christ preeminent. But he's placed one thing in the local church that is different from any other organization, organism, any other thing, and it's called preaching. It's called the preaching of the Word of God. And did I say teaching? No, no. teaching is important too, amen. But it's the preaching of the Word of God that's bi vitally important to the church. Look at Acts chapter number 2. Look at verse number 14. Look at Acts chapter number 2, verse number 14. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his what? Voice, voice amen. Preaching means you lift up your voice. Amen. Can I get a witness right there? Amen. Hey, listen, preaching ought not put you to sleep. It ought to keep you well awake. Amen. The preacher ought to be stepping on your toes, poking you in the eye. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Look at it now. Lift up the 11, lifted up his voice and said unto them, ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be it known unto you and hearken to my what? What was Peter doing? He was preaching, amen. He would begin to preach, and what a blessing that was. And we can see some of the content of what he preached. He talked about Jesus Christ, his death, his burial, his resurrection. He told them they crucified him, amen. He was direct. He was pointed. He didn't play around with it. He told it like it was. 1 Corinthians chapter number 1, verse number 18, the Bible says this, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, if you're saved in here, say amen. amen. It is the power of God. Amen. It's preaching, man. If you don't love preaching, something's wrong with you. Man, I'm telling you, something ain't right in your life. You need to get right with God if you don't love preaching. 1 Corinthians chapter number 1, verse number 21. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of what? preaching to save them that believe. Listen, the bottom line is, is, let's just be honest. It doesn't make any sense for people to come to church service after service and have a preacher stand up here and tell them how wicked they've been this week, how sinful, you better get right with God, you're doing this, you're doing that, you're not being faithful. Does that make any sense? I want to come and get beat up every week, amen? But you know, the thing about it is, is this right here. Man, you get a taste for it, and you're born again, and you're saved, and the Spirit of God's inside of you. All of a sudden, man, you just start hungering that thing. Yeah, Preacher, step on my toes, amen, here. People start putting their toes out in the aisle. I know they're getting right with God, amen. I'm telling you right now, preaching. It's by the foolishness of preaching to win them that are lost. Man, I'm telling you something right now. God uses preaching. And preaching is to lift up your voice like a trumpet, as the Bible says in Isaiah. The Bible says not to preach stories or story times or fables. It says to preach the word of God. You're going to get a lot of scripture today, amen? And so as we look at this, God used miracles at Pentecost to get attention. But preaching is what pierced the heart of the people. They spoke in tongues, the Bible says. The apostles spoke in tongues. And every man heard them in their own language and in their own dialect. 
That's what tongues was in the Bible. It wasn't gibberish. It wasn't some unknown heavenly language. It was these people were Jews from devout, na- uh, for, uh, devout Jews from all nations that had come to, 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 to Jerusalem to, to observe the feast of Pentecost. Are you with me? It was just after, uh, not too long after the high Sabbath. The high Sabbath was the time that once a year the high priest would go into the temple and he would put the blood of that lamb that was slain on the mercy seat. And then there was uh, 37 days later, or no, 47 days later, the feast of Pentecost after after the uh, Sabbath. Are you with me? And so it was the Feast of Pentecost. All these Jews from the devout nations were gathered around. They spoke all kinds of different languages. Are you with me? And they heard them in their own language and in their own dialect. They didn't hear gibberish. They heard a spoken, known language. And so, and he, and that miracle was done to validify what they were doing because there wasn't a completed Bible yet. Are you with me? But what pricked their heart? Peter's preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can see it in Acts chapter number 2. He preached his death, his burial, and most importantly, his resurrection. Amen? No resurrection, no salvation. And so as we look at this, we see this. It was through preaching. Preaching inspires people to get saved. Amen? Preaching inspires people to get right. Listen, the bottom line is, why do you need to come to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night? Why do you need to do that? Because you need somebody to step on your toes. Because I'm telling you, from Sunday night to Wednesday night, listen, there's a whole lot of sin that takes place. Amen? There's a whole lot of living going on. And you need a preacher to get in here and preach to you and say, this is what the Bible says, do right. Hey, from Wednesday to Sunday, listen, you need preaching, amen? You need a preacher to step on your toes to keep you right and straight on the narrow. Man, I'm telling you, you get out of church, you get away from preaching, Man, all of a sudden, you start straying. Your focus gets on everything under the sun instead of the things of God. Look at what it says in verse number 40 of our text. Verse number 40 of chapter number 2. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this what? Untoward generation. You know what that word untoward means? It means perverse, crooked, not straight. And we're living, and listen, if you've never noticed, America's been a really great nation for many, many years. But look what's going on today. It is insane. And the Democrats are doing everything they can. D.C. becoming a state, I wonder what's behind all that. I'd have to say they don't want to have to cheat on the next election like they did this last one. Are you with me? Hey, listen, the bottom line is is they're doing things to try and and, and secure their every win from here on out because they're trying to bring in a one world order and they're trying to bring in socialism and communism to the United States of America. And boy, and it has been crazy what's happening in our country right now. And so God help us. We better be praying, amen. We better be doing right. We better be trying to reach people for the cause of Jesus Christ. Preaching inspires people, amen, and inspires them to get saved and inspires them to do the right thing and be right. Hey, listen, there's an evangelist named Sam Jones from the early part of the 1900s, about the 1940s is when he preached. And man, this guy, he was a rip-snorting preacher, man. I'm telling you what, he, his wife asked him, what are you doing? I'm going out to preach, and I'm going to go skin the hogs. That's what he'd say, amen. And he'd preach, and he would rip and snort. He wasn't careful or anything, but he led a lot of people to the Lord and reached a lot of people with the cause of Christ. This is what his wife said one day. If you keep preaching like that, we're going to starve to death. He said, well, we'll get the word out that I died of typhoid fever. I can't preach any other way. Amen? And that's the truth of it. The bottom line is, is there ought to be a fire in a preacher's soul to preach the word of God. And listen, you know what? The bottom line is this right here. Listen, if I don't get a little crazy and say some crazy stuff once in a while, man, I'm telling you, something's wrong. Preachers have always done that. Always. Are you with me? And that's the truth of it. Listen, we want a little refined preacher up here. Now the Bible says, God help us, amen. Stop being such a stiff, amen, and come to life. Man, alive, we need some preaching. 
Man, it's good. Preaching changes people's lives, and that's the truth of it. You know what? The bottom line is, 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 is our heart can get hard and stony, and it takes a hammer to break the rocks in pieces. Amen? And that's what the Bible says about the Word of God. It's a hammer. It's like a hammer that breaketh the rocks in pieces. Amen? It's like a fire. Amen? And it, it, it'll melt you down. It'll purify you. And if you'll let it and allow it to do so. Listen, the bottom line is, it's through preaching. It's through preaching. The bottom line is, we inspire people to develop hearts for God through preaching. But you know there's another way. One of the things I love about what Brother Devin has done here at the church, and he's done it so much better than I did, was he started getting people to praise the Lord more often. He asked constantly all the time, hey, does anybody want to praise the Lord for something? You know, another way people get a heart for God is through praising the Lord. And one of the greatest places to praise the Lord is in the Lord's church, amen? And we have times of praise, and now we actually have a Friday night service, a praise and prayer service. And people praise the Lord on Friday night, and then we go to the Lord in prayer. And man, God is doing some great things through that service, amen? It is exciting. It's through praising God. Listen, you know, you can praise God. It's our music praises God, our preaching praises God, our Sunday school praises God, our soul winning praises God, all the other ministries of our, our church praises God, amen? And it's helping people to have a heart for the Lord. People have said, God is in this place. Every pastor I've ever had preach from this pulpit has told me afterwards, man, there's great liberty here. I had liberty to preach and say what needed to be said. I didn't feel restrained one bit. Well, there's a reason for that, amen? Because there's a pastor here that plows deep, amen, and keeps on plowing and keeps on digging it up to make sure the soil stays soft. Amen. You don't plant ground for a while. What happens to that ground? It gets hard. What else happens to that ground? The rocks start coming up, amen, and they're in there, and those rocks come up to the surface. Listen, when you're plowing, you get rid of those rocks, can I get a witness? Man, you get rid of those things before you plant. And listen, the bottom line is, is this right here. You got to plow deep. You got to dig. You can't do this surface preaching. God loves you. Yes, he does. Amen. And because he loves you, you ought to love him enough to live right. Amen. Amen. And so we see through praising Psalm 34, verse number three, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Hey, listen, do you have a heart for God? Do you love the Lord? Does it make you want to do something for Jesus? If you got the Holy Spirit living inside you, you shouldn't be satisfied with just sitting sour and soaking and getting just sinful, amen? You ought to want to do something. You ought to want to lift your hand once in a while, say, glory to God, praise the Lord. You know, the Bible says every now and then, you know, it's a good thing. We ought to do this a little bit more often. You know what? Brother Joe's life is a testimony to what Jesus Christ can do. Let's give God a hand for Brother Joe's life. Amen. <laughs> Woo! Glory God! Look what you've done. Look at what Brother jo what God's done in Brother Lawfer's life. Amen. Let's give God a hand. Amen. <laughs> Woo! Glory! Brother Mario's life. Amen. <laughs> Listen, you know the Bible says clap unto the Lord. It says clap unto the Lord. It says lift up holy hands unto God. It says to lift your voice, amen, and praise the Lord. Shout unto the Lord. Man, are you with me? Man, we'll shout at an Ohio State Buckeyes game, but we're in church. Help us, Jesus, amen. Can I get a witness? Man, the church is to inspire people to have a heart for God. And we do it through preaching and through praising. Psalm cha or Ephesians chapter number 5, verse number 19. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. You know what? Your music ought to be in such a way that it develops your heart for God. Listen, you want to listen to country music? You go ahead, but you'll have a heart for sorrow. You'll become a drama queen is what you'll become. Can I get a witness? My dog died, my truck broke down, my wife left me five times over. Can I get a witness? Go ahead and listen to that stuff if you want, but you'll be like one of the most depressed people on earth. And then you go, I'm going to listen to some rock and roll and jam it out. And your brain's going to be fried. Amen? You're going to be crazy. You ought to listen to music that causes the Holy Spirit to well up inside of you. And causes that Holy Spirit to want you to love God more. Your music, this music such a powerful tool. 
You say, why do we just stick with an old piano? And if I can get an organ player in here, man, we're going to do that too, amen. Why? Why not the drums? Why not the electric guitar? Why not an electric bass? Why not all that stuff? Because there is something about just clean, holy music. Man, it's good to just sing the songs out of the song. It's good to pick up a songbook and see the notes and see the words and sing from your heart to the Lord. Listen, I'm not here to be entertained. I'm here to praise Him. And I praise Him in song when I sing to Him. Amen? And it's not about what I like and don't like. It's about the kind of music He likes. And there is over 600 references in the Bible about what music is and what it's supposed to do. Amen? Amen? And so, and the Bible says this very clearly, all music is worship. Now, it's not all worship to God, but it does worship something. And so, hey, just, just a nugget for you. And then uh, we see this here. Hey, listen, it's important. And praise. He hath put a new song in my heart. We see this four times in the book of Psalms. New song. Listen, the music ought to be different than what the world has to offer. It's a new song. It's different. It shouldn't sound like what they have going on. And it's music, not words. Can I get a witness? And so a heart for God is our goal, that we would love God with our heart, all our heart, all our soul, and all our might. Amen? And that is the first and great commandment, and the second is like and unto it. Can I get a witness? And that's to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Amen? That's the commandment from God. That is what is primary at Solid Rock Baptist Church, and it's to inspire people to have a heart for God. But not only that, the second purpose is to include people in our church family. It's to include people. It's to get other people in, amen? We're to get other people in. That is primary. Jesus Christ, as he was ascending up into heaven, he said, Go ye therefore and teach how many nations? All nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe how many things? All things. Just a couple of things? No, all things. The entire word of God? Yes, the entire word of God. We're just going to cut out the Old Testament because we don't like what it says anymore. We're going to get rid of it. You know what? There's this group out there that we're just red-letter Christians. We only believe what Jesus said. Are you kidding me? The whole Bible was written by Jesus. Are you, are you serious? I mean, come on. He gave us the Word of God, 66 books, the canon of Scripture. And man, I'm telling you, it's crazy what people are doing today. All kinds of different beliefs, all kinds of different faiths, all kinds of craziness. And, and many roads lead to God. Give me a break, amen. Does that sound like God or does that sound like the devil? Yeah. That's the devil, amen. He is deceiving people and trying to get people to go the wrong way. And listen, let's just be honest. If, if this is the, the, the line of tile that you have to stay on in order to go to heaven, you've got to stay on this line right here. This is it. Well, if he can get you started on this one, has he accomplished you from getting to heaven? Yes, he has. Amen. If he can just get you to believe one thing wrong about Jesus, if he can get you to believe that Jesus is just a man, he was a good teacher, he's the Savior, there's a group out there that says that, but they don't say he's God. Well, if you don't believe he's God, he can't save you. Are you with me? Jesus is God. Jesus is. And, and you know what he did? He became man to glorify God the Father and give people a physical image of God the Father on earth. That's what it says. He was manifested. So, hey, listen, that's why he told Philip, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father, Philip. Hello, how long have I been with you? That's what he said in John chapter number 14. Can I get a witness? And so look at this now. It's good stuff. And so purpose to include people. It's a purpose to include people in our church family. Hey, listen, we believe that people need to be saved. That means they get, they're settled. They're settled in heaven. They've made their reservations. They're good. They've been born again. Then, after that, they're baptized to show that they were saved, that they're not ashamed. And that baptism pictures the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. When they stand in the water, the water crosses their body. It's a picture of the cross, amen, his death. When they get put in the water, what's that picture? His burial. When they get brought up out of the water, what's that? His resurrection, amen. And that's so that we can have a, the Bible says in Peter, that we can have a good conscience towards God. It's not to put away the filth of the flesh. Baptism doesn't do any of that. What baptism, listen, the bottom line is, is this. If you think baptism got you to heaven, you just got wet, amen. That's all you got. You didn't get nothing washed away. Now, if you had some dirty hands or something like that, and you scrubbed around in that water while you were in there, then maybe your hands got a little cleaner, amen? But the bottom line is this. Salvation is putting your faith and trust in Jesus and Him alone. Amen. Baptism is a picture of that salvation. It follows salvation, and you're never going to find a single instance in the Bible where people were baptized before they accepted Jesus Christ. Amen? God's good. And so anyways, 
That was fun. Whew, now I'm out of breath. Amen. Hallelujah. And so anyways, look at what it says in Acts chapter number 2, verse number 41. Then they that what? Gladly received his word. After they had received the word, after they had believed, they were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about what? 3,000 souls. So it was an awesome day for the church at Jerusalem. And so we see this. And so we see through baptism, and but also through membership. We include people through baptism. Another way is through membership. Some people have already been baptized and those things. And so we will accept them through membership. You don't have to get baptized but one time as long as it's in a place of like faith. Can I get a witness? And so Acts 2.41, the Bible says this. And it says, uh, uh, it says, then were they added unto them about 3,000 souls. How did they get added to them? Through the baptism. The Bible says over in 1 Corinthians chapter number 12, it says that we've been baptized by the Spirit of God into the body of Christ. Are you with me? That is a spiritual baptism that takes place upon salvation. The baptism of the Spirit. It's not evidenced by speaking in tongues. It's not evidenced by anything. It's when you accept Christ, you're baptized into the spiritual body. But a physical baptism is still required. Amen? And the physical baptism adds you to a physical church. Can I get a witness? The Bible says that which is flesh is flesh and that which is spirit is spirit. And you've got to be able to define the two in the Bible. Sometimes God is speaking about the church in general, the spiritual church. But sometimes when you're reading in the Bible, it's actually talking about a physical church in a physical location. And so you can't apply certain things in certain places. You have to figure out what it is. Is he talking about fleshly or is he talking about spiritually? Can I get a witness? Understanding the Word of God. And so we see this, amen? And so there's this membership that is required. Hey, listen, in adding people to the church is through baptism, is through membership, and it's through fellowship, amen? Man, I'm telling you something right now. Fellowship is so important. Hey, listen, you want to know why we eat so much around here? Well, because we like food, amen? And so, but another reason is, is because of fellowship. Fellowship is so important. Fellowship and getting together and spending time together and breaking bread together and throwing down some food together, it gets people talking, amen? It gets people comfortable with one another. Man alive, I'm telling you, it's so important that we spend time together to get to know each other so as a church body, we function better. Listen, if my thumb didn't understand my hand, there'd be a real problem with my thumb. Are you with me? I'd be trying to pick something up and my thumb's like, nope, not doing it. Are you with me? Or if I want to walk somewhere, my left leg decides, you know what? I'm not walking. <laughs> That'd be pretty weird to see a guy going down the street walking like you knew something's wrong with him, right? Are you with me? And the fellowship helps us to function well together. And so fellowship's so, so vitally important. Uh, we believe in this, amen? Look at what it says in the Bible. Look at what it says, verse number 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, the teaching of the Word of God, and what? Fellowship. Fellowship. And in what? Fellowship. Breaking bread, amen? And in what? Prayer. Prayers, amen? They were in this, and they were together in this, and they were working together for the cause of Jesus Christ. And more important than, man, well, I don't like that color of the carpet. Well, I'm sorry you don't like that color of the carpet, but man, that's not a reason not to go to church. Right. Amen? Well, I think the piano should be on this side of the auditorium and the organ should be on this side of the organ. Well, great. Praise the Lord. Somebody had to make a decision about that. We decided to put it over on this side, and it's been there for 11 years, and we're not going to change it. Are you with me? And so if the piano being on this side of the church offends you, uh, there's a problem there too. Amen? Great peace have they that love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. You're not loving God's law like you ought to, amen? Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Can I get a witness? God is good. And so anyways, let me move along. We're, oh, we're going to be here all day. And so first, hey, listen, hey, the purpose of the church is, is to inspire people to have a heart for God. It is to include people in our church family. But thirdly, it is also to purpose to instruct people in God's word. It's, it's, Preaching is important, amen, but teaching is important too. And that's why we have Sunday school. Sunday school is vitally important to the knowledge and growth in the Word of God. Preaching is to challenge you and convict you and deal with you. And you learn from preaching, amen. You know my, my preaching is very Scripture deep. It is. But Sunday school is where you're going to get discipled. 
Sunday school is where you're going to get the deeper things and the doctrines and all of those kind of things. You need to get into the teaching ministry of Solid Rock Baptist Church just as much as you need to get into the preaching ministry because teaching is going to help give you the knowledge that you need to be the right soul winner, to be the right this, to be the right that, whatever area, to have your marriage lined up to what the Bible says, all of these things. Can I get a witness? And so the purpose to instruct people in God's Word, and of course, the first thing is to instruct them in doctrine. Now, the old saying is true. Doctrine does divide. Amos 3.3, 3, how can two walk together except they be agreed? Amen. And listen, the bottom line is, is this right here. We've taken a strong stand at Solid Rock Baptist Church about separation of, of the different things. I'm not going to walk down the street for the cause of abortion with a Catholic. I'm not going to do it. You say, why? Because we don't agree. We don't agree. They think they have a different opinion. They think taking communion is what gets them to heaven. Listen, the bottom line is, is we don't agree, so I'm not going to walk down the road with them holding a sign. You know, liver, what is it? Free life, whatever. Pro-life, pro-life. Yeah, there it is. Pro-life, hey, pro-life. I'm all for pro-life. Amen? I'm going to preach against abortion every time. But the bottom line is this right here. Hey, listen, it's to instruct in doctrine, and doctrine does separate. The doctrine of salvation is vital. And when I look at people and different things like that, I want to know that their doctrine about how they're getting to heaven is right. Yes. Amen. I don't want them to think they're going to heaven because they took a piece of bread from a communion. Are you with me? Right. That's not going to get anybody to heaven. Are you with me? They, the Catholics believe that that bread and that wine actually turns into physically the blood and body of Jesus Christ. That's what they teach. It's called transubstantiation. They believe that. Man, they're cannibals. Are you with me? That's what it is. And today in Christianity, we don't want to admit those things. And I find that to be in some strong, strong Bible believers. And you want to know why? It's because it's easier for them to believe that they're okay and they're going to heaven. But in reality, they need Jesus. And if you really love them and you really care for them, you've got to get the gospel to them so they can be saved. That's what we have to understand the doctrine of the teaching of the Word of God. I don't preach the way I preach to be ugly, to be mean. I'm trying to wake people up and get them right with God. And so it's, it's to instruct people in God's Word, to teach them the doctrines of the Word of God. Go to Ephesians chapter number 4 with me. Ephesians chapter number 4. Don't lose your place in Acts 2. Ephesians chapter number 4. I want you to see this. This is so important. The Bible is very clear. I talked about doctrine last week. I preached on a, a whole message on doctrine. And I believe, I believe Doug put it on YouTube. Is that correct, Brother Doug? Yeah. It's on YouTube if you want to look that up. He can give you the information about how to find it. And uh, he's been putting that stuff on there and whatnot. And so uh, Ephesians uh, chapter number 4, look at verse number 7 when you get there. Ephesians chapter number 4, verse number 7. Doctrine is not always pleasing to people. It's just not. Verse number 7, look at what it says. It says in verse number 7, But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of what? Christ. Amen. Now realize he's talking to the church at Ephesus. He's talking to believers. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. What is that talking about? He led captivity captive. When he came up, now the Bible, some people believe that Jesus didn't spend any time in hell. Well, the Bible says in Acts chapter number two, where we're at, it says, I, the, the father saying to the son, I will not leave thy soul in hell. You can't leave somebody somewhere they've never been. Amen. When Jesus became a man, he took on a soul and he took on a body. He already was a spirit because he's God. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Okay. And so, and it says here in this passage, when he ascended, he led captivity captive. His spirit was in paradise. His soul was in hell and his body was in the tomb, obviously. Okay. And so when he came up and he arose from his ascension, he took all those Old Testament saints that were in paradise, which is in the heart of the earth. When you study the scriptures, you'll figure that out. And he led those captives, uh, that captivity captive. He gave them, and that was the, really the first ascension into heaven, and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, 
what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? Are you with me? You're getting it. The heart of the earth is where hell is. That's also where paradise was too. And that's how come Abraham in his bosom, the people in hell could see paradise. And we see that story. And he says, he that descended in the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. Amen? And so we see this passage very clearly. Now look at what it says next. And he gave some what? Apostles. We have the apostles in the scriptures. And he gave some what? Prophets. He's talking about the Old Testament. And some what? Evangelists, which we still have today. And some what? Pastors and teachers. Some say they're two different offices. Some say they're the one and the same. Pastors ought to be apt to teach. Doesn't mean they're supposed to be a professional teacher, but they ought to be apt to do so. And so, uh, but they definitely need to have the gift of preaching. And so we see this. And why? For the perfecting of the what? Saints. For the work of the what? Ministry. Because ministry takes work. For the edifying of the body of what? Christ. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God and a perfect man, unto a perfect man under the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Listen, these, this is why God has given the church. And this is why God says that you need to be a member of the church. And this is why God places a man over the church as the pastor. Amen? So that he can edify the body of Christ and bring the body of Christ through the preaching and the teaching ministry of Solid Rock Baptist Church into unity of the faith. Amen? From the Word of God. Now look at this. Now let's keep reading. Verse number 14 is important. Why? That we henceforth be no more children, look at it now, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of what? Doctrine. By the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Are you getting it? Hey, listen, the reason why the church is here, the reason why Jesus did what he did was so that the church would have the power that it needs, and he places somebody over that church to lead, guide, and direct that church, amen, so that you can grow in the faith of Jesus Christ, that we can be unified as a body. Listen, if, one, if, if everybody on this side of the church doesn't like everybody on this side of the church, and everybody on this side of the church doesn't like this side of the church, and we got all these little cliques, well, you're not a part of the, you're not a part of the cool clique because we wear leaders buy jeans and and you're not a part of the cool clique because we wear dickies and you're not a part of the are you kidding me fractions and divisions in the church no way jose and i don't even know who jose is but amen it ain't happening can i get a witness the bottom line is this right here is we've got to be unified if we're going to accomplish the work that god's called us to And it requires a man of God to teach the doctrine of the Word of God so that you, when you're out there in the world and you hear something, instead of thinking, you know, that doesn't sound too bad. We ought to try that at church. The preacher's already talked about it, already cleared it up and said, no way, Jose. So maybe you're Jose, amen. And so anyways, look at this now. Are you with me? We do things for a reason. And I promise you, at Solid Rock Baptist Church, we have tried to line everything up to what the Bible says. As clear as possible. This isn't an archaic book that doesn't apply today. It still very much applies today. Amen. And so as we look at this, we see this. It's a purpose. Hey, listen, to instruct people in the word of God. Second Timothy chapter number four, verses two and three. You know I love this passage. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come, and I say is now here, when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. In other words, you scratch my ear, I'll tell you whatever you want to hear. And so we see the bottom line is, is there's doctrine of the Holy Spirit, there's doctrine of soul winning, eternal security, there's the doctrine of the scriptures, there's the doctrine of missions and reaching the world, there's the doctrine of the end times, there's the doctrine of giving, there's the doctrine of marriage and the doctrine of raising kids. The Bible talks about it all. You say, I'm not really sure how I'm going to do this. 
Well, just, hey, listen, if you're not sure, I promise you, you come and see me, and I'll give you scriptures out of the Bible that tells you this is how your marriage is supposed to be. This is the role of the husband. This is the role of the wife. This is the role of the children. This is how family's supposed to look. Amen? This is what the Bible says about working. Hey, you're supposed to be a good employer and a hard worker and somebody that your employer can count on and that you should be praising God at work. Amen? And so as we look at this, we see this. Man, it's an amazing thing. Doctrine. Don't just be a Christian by name, but be a Christian by practice and belief. Not only instruction and doctrine, but also instruction in prayer, because prayer is vitally important in our lives. Look at what it says in verse number 42 of Acts chapter number 2. Acts chapter number 2, verse number 42, and they continued steadfastly in apostles, what? Doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in what? prayers. We see over in chapter number four, if you look there with me, turn over a page and look at verse, uh, 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 verse, um, where is it? Oh, uh, where is that passage? It's right there somewhere. I know it is. Ah, uh, verse number 31. And when they had what? Verse number 31. If you're there, say amen. And when they had what? Prayed. The place was what? shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God with what? Prayer and a right prayer life will give you boldness in your preaching of the word of God. It'll help you to proclaim the word of God. You'll speak the word of God with boldness. You won't be afraid to do it. If you're scared to talk about Jesus at work, your prayer life's not right. Hmm? If you're afraid to talk to people about Jesus on the street, your prayer life's not right. That's what this said when they prayed. They were filled with the Holy Ghost, and they all spake the Word of God with boldness. And if your prayer life's effective, you will be filled with the Holy Spirit, and you will speak the Word of God with boldness. Can I get a witness? I didn't write it. God did. I just happened to explain it. And so as we look at this, we see this right here. Listen, Luke 18, 1, and he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. It's easy to stop praying for something when you don't see the answer happen. But I promise you right now, you pray, God is going to answer. It may not be in your time, but it will be in His. Amen? <laughs> Ephesians chapter number 6, verse number 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for the saints. Hey, listen, the bottom line is this right here. We need to be pray warriors. That's why we started the Friday night service, so that we could spend time together as a church family focused and tuned in on prayer. And so not only that, listen, the Bible line is, is we need to pray. And so to inspire, to include, to instruct, but also the purpose of the church, number four, is to involve people in God's work. First Peter chapter number four, verse number 10, as every man hath received one gift, so even so minister the same one to another. Can I get a witness? As good stewards of the manifold grace of God. And boy, I'll tell you what, there ought to be somewhere when people get saved, they get baptized, they get in church, there ought to come a point in a time and not too far off in the distance where they're doing something, whether it be ushering, whether it be the lint rolling the chairs, whether it be sweeping and mopping the floor or cleaning a bathroom, or whether it be teaching a Sunday school class or, or taking charge of the missions or, or making sure that they're, they're involved in prayer in different ministries or, or doing the finances, amen, or, or something, being involved somehow, some way. Listen, if it just means coming in and watering the plants outside for crying out loud, serving the Lord, making sure those things don't die, because I promise you, leave it to me, they're going to die. And so, hey, listen, the bottom line is, is, you see my thumbs? They are Caucasian. They are not green. And so, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Listen to this now. I'm telling you right now. Hey, getting involved in little steps and eventually to where you're actually involved in going with somebody and talking to people about Jesus and doing those kind of things. Listen. There's a lot to do for the cause of Jesus Christ to keep a church going in the direction it's supposed to go. I don't know about you, but when people walk through the door, I don't want them to look, ooh, these people don't really care about what they think, what God thinks, or what people think about their God. Are you with me? When people walk in, I want them to be, listen, I want them to, man, look at this place. They, they're working hard to try and keep this place sharp and clean and represent their Savior. That's, that's what I desire. One of the greatest grievances I have about our church is our floor, man. I hate it. I can't wait to replace it. I can't stand the floor here. It drives me crazy. And listen, I'm telling you, I'm looking forward to that day. Listen, when we look at this and we see this, man, God is good. And we ought to be involved in his work. If you love Jesus, say amen. amen. If you love him, serve him, amen. Do something for him. 
Listen, I love my wife. I do things for my wife, amen? She loves me. She does stuff for me, amen? You say you'll love Jesus, serve the Lord. And a preacher ought not be up here grabbing your arm and twisting it and putting you in an arm bar and putting you in a chokehold. Do something for Jesus. Do something for Jesus. I'm not going to do anything for Jesus. You said you loved him. I do love him. Give me a break, amen. You love Jesus. Do something for Jesus. Man, it would be a wonderful thing. And I promise you, you won't be sad you did. There's not a day of my life that I've served the Lord that I regret. Listen, I'm here to tell you something right now because I decided to do things God's way. I'm just, I'm just, I guess I'm just dumb enough to believe what the Bible says. I'm just dumb enough when the Bible says I'm to be the head of the home and my wife is to be submissive to me. That's the way our home was going to be. <laughs> Listen, that's the way it was going to be. And I didn't beat her. I didn't get a big stick and make her submit to me. But I loved her until she did. Are you with me? I loved her until she did. And all of a sudden, she wanted to please me because I loved her. Are you with me? And listen, the bottom line is, is this right here. More than she loved me, she loved God. And because she loved God, she was willing to fulfill her role. Because I loved God, I was willing to fulfill my role. And as a result of that, we decided that we were going to raise the Bi our kids the way the Bible said. I'm not going to time out them in a corner. That's not what we did. We took the rod of correction, as the Bible says, and we beat our children with it across their bottom. The Bible says, beat them and spare not for their crying. Are you with me? And now my son is my assistant pastor, and my daughter is a pastor's wife. Amen? Amen? And they're loving God, and they're serving Jesus. And my wife, uh, my daughter played the piano this morning. My daughter-in-law played the piano this morning. My son led the music this morning, sang a special this morning. My son-in-law led the music this morning. And he also preached this morning and probably sang a special this morning, too, in their church. And you say, why? Because years ago, when I got saved, I decided, you know what? I'm just, if the preacher says it, I'm going to do it. If he can show me from the Bible, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to obey what the Bible says. And I don't regret it one bit because God is blessed. God has blessed us abundantly. You look at Solid Rock Baptist Church. Look at what God's done just because one guy decided he's just going to do what God says. That's what it all started from. And you know what? God poured his grace. Did you do everything right? <laughs> Don't make me laugh, amen. I've made a lot of mistakes. You just ask some of the people in here, they'll volunteer the mistakes. And so, hey, listen, the bottom line is this right here. But the Lord's grace has been poured out because the best of my ability with all my heart and with all my soul, I love Jesus. You see why? Look what he did for me. He was marred worse than any man. He was brutalized. He was beaten. He took a suffering, and, a, and a, he didn't deserve it, but I sure did. And he took my place so that I could have a home in heaven, and I could miss out. And listen, I'm telling you something right now. I don't regret giving up this or giving up that. I sure do miss that. Boy, sure would love to do that right now. I don't think so. I don't miss any of it. I don't miss it a bit, and I'm so thankful that I made the decisions I made. I'm so thankful that I set an example for my kids that we just don't miss church. I'm glad I did. I'm glad that my kids know that mom and dad, they weren't perfect, but they did love God. Amen? Listen, I'm telling you right now, it's been worth it all. And you've got to be involved. I raised my kids serving the Lord. That's what we did. <laughs> we didn't really have like this day off of leisure. There wasn't too many Saturdays that ever went by that we weren't doing something, knocking some doors for even a little bit every week. I worked a full week. And what did we do? We took and dragged our kids when we were in Germany. We were in Oklahoma. We started back then. That's where we started getting right with God was in Oklahoma when I was in the Army. We went to Bible Baptist Church, Pastor, Pastor Robert Weger, and we got involved in the teen class. We were assistants there. I was in no shape to teach at all, trust me, because the first time I did a devotion, I cussed. I cussed at the teenagers, <laughs> so I was just getting in, amen, I was just learning, and he trusted me with it, it was his fault, amen, I told him so later too, and so anyways, listen, but do you see what I'm saying, I raised my kids in church, 
We dragged them along with us. We went on bike rides. We did all kinds of things in church. We sang in choirs. We helped with this and that in cleaning. When we were in Germany, I became the first deacon the church ever had. I became the first uh, 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 teen Sunday school teacher they ever had and was the first class I ever had. And man, we went. We went day in and day out and we served the Lord. I was full time in the military. We worked hard from five o'clock in the morning until five o'clock in the evening. We did all of those things. And you know what? Tuesday, come soul winning time. Guess where I was? I was in Dettelbach, Germany, going soul winning with my pastor. You know what? On Thursday was church. On Friday, guess what we did on Friday? I was a teen leader. We had a teen activity every Friday night, just about. And then on Saturday, guess what I did then? Stayed home? No. I went, and I went door knocking and visited for the bus route and helped my preacher. And you know what I did on Sunday? Showed up for Sunday school, taught my Sunday school lesson. I sang in the choir. We cleaned the church once a month while we were there. We did all kinds of stuff for the cause of Jesus Christ. And that's how my kids were raised. We served him. And we served him. And you know what? I don't go back and say, man, I wish I'd have taken that Saturday off and done gone fishing or done gone done. No, I don't regret one single bit of it because it's worth it all. It's worth it. It's worth it to have my son as my assistant pastor, to have my daughter married to a preacher, not wondering where they're at and what they're doing, knowing that they're going to be in church and knowing that they love Jesus and they're living good lives and they're serving the Lord. And they're going to do the same thing with their kids. I'm thankful for what the Lord's done. I don't regret a bit of it. You know what I do regret? I wish I'd have done more. I wish that I'd been more faithful. I wish that I'd given more to the work of God. I wish that I scrimped a little bit less and bought less for myself and gave more to the work because that's what's going to be in heaven for us. It's not going to be my house or my cars or my things. It's going to be what I put into the hands of God. And boy, that's what's going to turn a country upside down for Jesus is people that will surrender and die to themselves. Oh, God is so good to us. He's so faithful. He's so good. The Bible says in Romans chapter number 12, verse number 1, it says in this passage, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You say, that seems so far for me to get to. It's just one decision at a time. That's one decision at a time. You know what? I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to go to church. You know what? When God opens the door for me to do something for him, I'm going to do it. You know what? I'm going to read my Bible every day, and I'm going to pray. Listen, if your preacher can get through his Bible every single month, I think you can read three chapters a day and get through it once a year. Amen? I think you can do that. I think you can spend some time praying and talking to the Lord every day and asking God to bless you and help you because I pray that for you. And I don't want my prayers to be in vain because you don't pray for yourself. Are you with me? It's going to be hard for God to answer my prayers if you're not praying yourself. Are you with me? Help me. Help me help you. Can I get a witness? Man, you do not know how much I love you. You do not know how much I want God to do something great, not just something okay. I want God to bless you so far beyond what you've ever been blessed in your life. I want you to see the glory of God in your family. I want you to see the glory of God in your life and in your workplace. I want God to do something so big in your life that God has to get the credit for it. And he will because he's faithful. And then number five, number five, not only to inspire, to include, to instruct, and to involve, but also to impact our area and our world for the cause of Jesus Christ. The, the church at Jerusalem, it started, and the day it started, it had 3,000 members just like that. It impacted its community. And not only that, a few chapters later, they're spread abroad, and they're impacting all of Asia Minor. Are you with me? 
there was a great impact and a spreading of the word of God. And man, it's incredible. The Bible commands us, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And why do you think we have these up here? We're trying to reach a world with the gospel of Jesus Christ, missionary after missionary after missionary after missionary. You would be amazed at how many, I'm talking fundamental independent Baptists, straight down the line, missionaries contact me on a weekly basis looking for support and can't find it. Want to go to the field, but they can't go because they don't have any money. That ought to rip your heart out. People wanting to go places they can't get to because they don't have the money to go. And they're praying and they're faithful and they're doing. But you know what the bottom line is, is God's plan is the local church. And that money's got to be funneled through the local church to the missionary. That's how it was for Paul and Barnabas when we started Acts chapter number 13 a few weeks ago. The church sent them. And that's what we need to do. We've got a bunch up there. But man, I wish that those plaques were down the hall, back up the hall, around the wall, down through there, and up and around here. And I wish we could support and support and support and support. But it takes money. And you've got to be willing to sacrifice your own desires for the cause of Jesus Christ. And I promise you this. Any dime you give to missions, it is unlimited returns in heaven. Because souls will be saved and lives will be changed. Are you with me? God help us to not just give to them, but to love those missionaries and encourage those missionaries. Help us, Jesus. Can I get a witness? We've got to give the gospel. Look back at Acts chapter number 2. I want to close with this. Verse number 46. Verse number 46. If you're there, say amen. Acts 2, verse number 46. And they, what? Continuing monthly, weekly, daily with what? One accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and what? Singleness of what? Heart. They were pricked where? In their heart. They received the word. Are you with me? And now there's singleness of heart. They're one in heart because they all, listen, when God convicts somebody in their heart, the way he convicted me is the way he convicted you. The way he pricked your heart about salvation is the way he pricked my heart about salvation. Are you with me? Now, you may have been in a different location, which obviously you were. I'm pretty sure none of you were at Providence Baptist College when you got saved. I was. And so, are you with me? And look, the bottom line is this right here. They were in one singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with how many people? And the Lord added to the what? Daily, such as should be saved. Listen, the bottom line is this right here. God's not dead. Can I get a witness? He's still working, still moving. And this morning, if God smote your heart, say amen. amen. If God dealt with you in some way, shape, or form, say hallelujah. hallelujah. God's alive and well, and he's still working in the church. And boy, I'm thankful for the Holy Spirit of God. He is faithful to us, and he loves us. The least we can do is be faithful to him and serve him with our lives. He's good. He's awesome. And I promise you, you won't regret one moment of serving the Lord. Everyone standing, every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, we sure do love you. We thank you for your goodness and your grace. Thank you for all that you do for us. God, help us. Help us as a church to inspire people to love God more. Father, help us as a church to include people into the family of Solid Rock Baptist Church. Help us never to become a clique. Help us never to become isolationists, but help us to reach our community. Help us to draw people in. Lord, help us not only to, to, to involve, get them included in the church, but also to, to also in, instruct them in the word of God and the doctrine. Lord, please help us to be good teachers of your word. Help us to be good preachers of the word of God. Lord, please, dear God, work and move and help us. Help us to involve people in the work, Lord. And God, give people a heart to serve you, Lord. 
God, I beg you, Lord, please work and move and help us to impact our community for the cause of Jesus Christ and the world around us through our missions program. God, please work and move as only you can. You're an awesome God and a powerful God, Lord. You're in charge. You're the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You have the preeminence at Solid Rock Baptist Church. Father, I beg you, work and move as only you can. Do what's needed in each and every heart in this place. In Jesus' precious holy name we pray, amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around. If God spoke to your heart this morning, would you slip your hand up as a testimony to heaven? God sees those hands. Thank you. You can put them down. Listen, child of, uh, child of God, it, it, listen, are you involved? Are you serving some way, somehow? Are you being faithful? Is God working in your heart and life? Are you doing what you need to do? Listen, if you're in here today and you know 100% for sure you're going to heaven when you die, you know that you know that you know you've accepted Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit of God lives inside of you, you know you're saved. If you know that as a matter of fact, would you slip your hand up? You know that you know you're saved. God sees those hands. You can put them down. Amen. Thank you for that. Child of God, child of God, are you a member? Have you joined have you been baptized? Has God spoke to your heart in some way, shape, or form this morning? If you're here today and you're not 100% for sure you're going to heaven when you die, would you be honest this morning and just slip your hand up? You're not sure you're saved. You're not sure you're going to heaven when you die. Is there one? You're not sure you're saved. D, I need Kristen. Father, we love you, we thank you, we praise you. We approach you, bless this invitation now. In Jesus we pray, amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If God spoke to your heart, why don't you make your way up to the altar? Let God have his way. If you can't kneel, the front row is wide open for you to make that decision. Take a step. The Bible says, draw nigh to me and I'll draw nigh to thee. Take that step. Let God have his way. If you can kneel at the altar, come kneel at the altar. Let God work and move in your heart and life. He is faithful. You can trust him. He's not going to hurt you. He's, I, listen, we're not going to embarrass you. We're not going to try to get you to, uh, we're not going to twist your arm in any way, shape, or form. But if you need to talk to God, now's the time.